Hey there everyone, got myself a 2008 Audi TT that I'm going to fix. Minor rear end damage, a little bit of side damage, and some minor front end damage, but not too bad otherwise. See, it's got a good door and fender on this side. Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm I'm just joking. This thing's for parts, parts only. Um, it tore the body completely apart. Here, this is from the rear end damage. There was something hit. It must have bounced something off the front, but the hit in the back was so hard. Shoved the wheel into the rocker, and the rocker so stiff that it just sheared, shoved forward. Even split the uh, uh, that aluminum strut tower in half. But yeah, sheared the floor pan away from the rocker the whole length. So there's literally almost nothing holding the side of the car on, except for the outside of the quarter panel and the top of the cowl. That's it. Um, but yeah, this video will be more of a how-to part out, I guess, or a parting out video. I've actually never done a modern car, let alone a German car before. I've always done uh, usually... 60s and older stuff But uh, yeah, so this will be interesting. I thought I'd try something Different than I always typically work with and I thought this would be a good first candidate. So yeah, I'm gonna I suppose have at it But anyways, yeah Nice red interior. Well was nice. I think the rear seats junk that seat might still be okay. I won't know until I pull it out. Um, everything in the dash should be good for the most part. Um, I guess it'll be just, I'll find out as I pull it apart. Well, got a good chunk of the front end off. Um, I'll probably end up having to, before I even touch the body and interior, might as well get the drivetrain out. It's probably what I'm going to have to do first. Um, yeah, I can, 
I can wiggle that rail. That's how loose that stuff is. And fortunately, even though the engine does turn over just fine with the breaker bar, I see the motor mount here has three bolts that hold it to the engine. Two of them sheared off, and then the third one broke its mount. Now, you could technically be fine with probably two if you wanted to reuse the engine, because the engine only has about 75,000 miles. But between that, the smashed idler pulley, or whatever you want to call that pulley there, which, you know, that's easy enough to replace too. And when it, it must hit the ground and it put a hole in the oil pan, which again, you just replace the oil pan, not a big deal. But I think for a buyer, they're going to look at all that and say, no bueno. So this will be a parts engine probably, um, which will still make good money in parts. The cylinder head should be, make, you know, be worth X amount and crankshaft rods and connecting rods and whatnot should be fine the intake should be worth a few bucks and whatnot so and then of course obviously got the transmission that should be worth you know a few bucks here and there and whatnot so that'll be my first goal is to get this drivetrain out of here and set it off to the side somewhere i'll have to look up to see how this i'll have to look up online and see how that comes apart or you know the easiest I mean, worst case scenario, saws on torch will make it work, but I'd rather not have to do that if I don't absolutely have to. Um, I'm going to keep plucking away at it, that's for sure. But uh, I can't even get this wheel off. Because it's all crunched in there. Um, but uh, yeah, until it starts to rain, if it does at all, or at least until it gets dark, I can keep working out here. I might take a little snack break here first but uh yeah it sucks that 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 it's got that i mean that's how crazy that wreck was that's all from it getting rear-ended that's not from it may have hit something just barely in the front end like you know maybe slid into a car another car or something but this i mean you could see it's a little hard to see but you can see that this rail is farther forward than that rail it just sheared the whole side of the car. You can see how much higher that side is compared to that side. It just, yeah, that just did a number on this thing. Crazy. Just crazy, crazy, crazy. But, um, yeah. VW Audi connector, wire connectors are the devil. Can't just have them simply slide apart. But, uh... Yeah, uh, I don't think I'll do the time lapse for the rest of the engine takeout because, like I say, it might be a pain in the ass. It, well, it will be a pain in the ass. If I've done it before, it would be one thing, but I haven't, so it might end up being an all-day expenditure just getting this out of here. But uh, I'll pick up once the this sucker's out of here. Well, it's actually not that bad to get this thing out of here. Well, it is and it isn't. Um... All I had to do is undo a uh, motor mount, and uh, it's pretty much out. Uh, even that motor mount was broken. Um, got that one popped off, even though it wasn't connected anymore. Um, but now I got some stuff I got to dis problem I'm going to have is that dry shaft and the exhaust. The dry shaft, I can't spin it because it's all bound up and smashed. So I can't spin it to get the bolts out. Which look like they're a bitch to get at anyways. So I don't think there's anything too flammable other than some wires underneath it. Try to cut that dry shaft. Try to cut them pipes, which are going to be a pain in the ass because they're stainless. I hope they're not double wall. If they are, that's going to be a real big pain in the ass. I can maybe get that one with the sawzall, I suppose. Maybe. I gotta get that shifter linkage disconnected. And then, uh, since the dry shaft is already shattered on this side, what the hell's that? Anyways, anyways um, since the dry shaft is snapped on that side, I'm probably just gonna cut that one with a torch instead of trying to pull it apart because I can't spin the axle to get them nuts out and and i don't think that's uh, actually most of the suspension stuff is as, as well as the engine actually to be honest 
isn't really Audi specific. It's the same as uh, I think it's all the same as a Passat and Golf as well. So it's not like it's high dollar stuff, anyways. Um, so yeah, and then once I get all that, I can lift this up a bit more, get the cherry picker under here, lift it out, cut any of the remaining wires and tubes. Pull it out, and then it's just uh, drop the K-frame then after that, which should be just a couple more bolts and some suspension bolts and figure out how to get that steering rack pulled off. And I could drop that, and then I'd be done up front for the time being. And then I could pull the hood fender off and a few more plastic pieces and other stuff up here, and then... Uh, work on the interior well I might work on the rear end first I don't know but yeah so trying to pull this sucker out try to do it before it's dark oh, just before dark and it's just starting to rain but I got it yeah it's too it's a little dark I don't know if you can turn the light on on this thing uh, maybe you have to do that before you start the video. But anyway, if you can, you, you can say, see a little bit. Getting that dry shaft was a pain in the ass. Getting each pipe was a pain in the ass. At least they weren't double, double walled. That would have been a nightmare. Um, and luckily there wasn't a fuel line there either. I didn't even think about that until afterwards. <laughs> um, and then I cut the axle shaft. I think them are cast iron. So that was kind of a pain in the ass. <coughs> Although easier than the dry shaft and the exhaust manifolds. And then a fuel line and some wires. And uh, she out. So, yeah. Now I can actually get back to working on this thing. Because that taking that apart is going to be its own project. Way after the fact. I may just try to sell it first, as is, but uh, if not, if it doesn't sell, then I'll, I'll part it out. But yeah, now I gotta get all the shit picked up before it pours, or at least just gets things wet. So, all right. Well, got that turret out of there. Biggest pain in the ass was the uh, steering column. I'm assuming the bolt that holds it, the, the, the rack and pinion to the steering column, you're obviously mo meant to get it from the inside, but one, screw that. And two, since everything's all twisted anyways, it was half coming out the hole anyways, so even if I could get did all that work to get it from the inside I don't know if I'd still be able to get it from the inside anyways and I don't think this is too important anyways I see it it's all one piece that bolts to the firewall but I can see it looks like it's kinked in the middle there anyways so I doubt doubt that whole assembly panels any good anyways I mean maybe it's straight and audible but anyway so I just had to get a hammer and chisel in there to tear away at that metal so I get my Ratching a wrench on there, and then it, then it fell out. I'll have to give this thing a whirl, 
see if it's okay. If it's not binding up, then the rack and pinion should be good. Um, I think that's just from when I pulled the engine out, not from the accident, although hard to say. Um, and like if I didn't mention before, this little K member here, I mean, it's cast aluminum, so it should be square. If it ain't broke, it should be square. But I'll once I have it all apart, I will uh, check the diagonals and whatnot to make sure first. But generally, the rule of thumb is if it's it's cast aluminum, if it ain't if it ain't broke, it's good. I mean, that's not exactly 100% every time, but it's a general rule of thumb. But like I say, I'll double check it. Well. I don't know how much further I'm going to get along uh, up front here. Might be a couple little things I might pick away here at first. And then, uh, yeah, then I'll try to get the stuff off the outside. Pull the hood, fenders. This one's good. Get this door off. Pull the other door off. Pull the deck lid thing off. And then start going to town in the interior. Then I'll get the interior all done, and then I'll get the remaining stuff on the firewall and underneath the car, and then that'll be it. So, I suppose I better get back at it. It's really nice out today for once. No rain, no major wind. It's not freezing. It's a good day. Well, I think I pretty much got everything I can for the time being now. Only there's not much else I can take off until I go through the interior and get the interior stripped. Um, yeah, looking pretty bare up here. Master cylinder, like I said, I'll take off. Probably one of the last things I take off are the brake booster with the master cylinder, I should say. The wiper mechanism looks like it'll be also easier to take off once everything's apart. Um, I mean, it might be able to come out easier now or whatever, but I don't know the, I don't know what secrets. I'm not gonna look into it at the moment. I can always wait. So I think now it's time to remove doors and what's left of that hatch. But I think first I'm gonna take a break. I need uh, my knees need a break. My hands need a break, and I'll be back out here. Just on a quick side note, you can just see with that fender off just how far 
the side of that car is just ripped away. Holy cow. Look at that. That is just insane. God, compared to that side, straight up and down. That thing sticks out like 30 degrees. Holy crap. Note to fucking self. Next time, get this lower inner bolt first before anything else. Because this thing sticks out so far, the door sticks up, up almost like, sticks up almost like a Lambo door kinda. And trying to get the hinge, because the hinge was spinning, because there's one bolt still in the bottom of the hinge that you gotta get from the inside somehow. And, oh man, did I have to fight that door. If I would just gotten that bottom one first, it would have been, well, just as easy as the driver's door. Driver's door took me, what, two minutes to do? Five minutes to do whatever? And didn't have to struggle? And then got the hatch off. So, yeah. Now, I don't know how far I'll get before it gets dark. I might just take apart... You know, I might just work on taking apart the door and the hatch, the wrecked ones, the wrecked door first, and then just start on the interior fresh tomorrow. Cause, yeah, especially with the light getting dark, it's gonna be harder to see in the interior. And ah, uh, I could work on the door in the meantime and whatnot. So, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Oh boy, what a project! <clears throat> Got all the interior out, everything, and I'm, I guess I'm now ready to start taking apart the dash. Uh, I ended up skipping, filming this part because, holy shit, you know, I knew going into this, like I say, I've never done a newer car, let alone a German car, so I knew there'd be a, a learning curve, and, an, and I knew also it doesn't help that the thing's half wrapped around a tree, that make it harder. It, oh my, I think I had probably about two and a half hours just getting the driver's seat out. Um, I ended up having to destroy the seat track. Um, I could have set, I mean, they have three plugs going to the seat. Um, the time it would have taken me to figure out which one it would have been to, I mean, in hindsight, it probably would have taken just as long and I would have, had, you know, not screwed up the seat tracks, but, you know, I didn't know that. I figured it would only take me a half hour or so to pop that sucker out of there, but yeah oh my it was it was I, I don't even want to talk about, <laughs> about it um yeah console wasn't much fun getting out either that's not fun the rear seat was actually real easy uh, a lot of the other stuff wasn't too bad headliner was easy and whatnot but the headliner was literally was all it was holding the windshield up so as soon as I pulled that out it was falling into the windshield frame it's laying down there now so I ripped that out um, and yeah, there were a few things in the back, um, that I got out of here. There's the battery. Uh, like I say, I, I tried hooking up power to this thing before I even started tearing it apart. No power, I mean, the fuse blocks and all the wiring is just all jack, so of course nothing's gonna light up. Um, this really shows you how bad the damage was, it's just... Holy cow, the brace there is completely gone. It's uh, it's buried now. I threw it over there. Uh, the only thing it was holding in place was the one seat mount. Um, yeah, it, this is this is just nuts. If that 
I, I found out it was a Toyota Corolla that hit this because I found a chunk of the bumper lodged in the suspension plastic bumper. Still the license plate on it too. And I ran the part number and it was for an 05 to 08 Corolla. So that Corolla must have been absolutely booking it to do that kind of damage. Another 10, 15, maybe 20 miles an hour and this would have just sheared this car right in half completely. Um, like I say, I don't think anybody was in it. I don't think the car was even running when it was hit. I think it was parked. Had to have been. It, 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 that's just the way it looks like. Um, but um, anyways, uh, after I take a little break, I think I'll come back out here, set the camera up, and see how hard it is going to take this dash out. I'm sure it's going to fight. I'm hoping I can remove the steering column without taking the wheel off first. I'd rather do that later at another time, or just leave it on there and sell the hole together without having to take it off. But find out. I can't drop the shifter until I remove the drive shaft. Um, and then, yeah, so once the dash is out and the last remaining stuff off the firewall, firewall is taken off, then it's just a matter of lifting this car up on its side and dropping the uh, stuff in the bottom. I don't know if the gas tank's been punctured or not. I see it's crushed pretty good. Um, so I'll have to be careful with that. But uh, I'm getting it. It's just, I mean, I've taken plenty of 50s and 60s Cadillacs apart. And, and while they could be a pain in the ass and take a long time, I, I think this will end up taking longer than any any other car I've ever done and like again part of that's just because I never done a German car before and also because this thing is so badly wrecked but also it's because it's a German car <laughs> wow um, so uh, yeah check you in a bit
Well, all right, I'm surprised how well that went. That was probably honestly getting that dash out. I mean, it was partly broken, so it made it a little easier, but still, you know, it weren't. And it took me another, say, half hour, 45 minutes to get the rest. It still would have been probably the fastest thing to come out of this car. Um, but the only thing I got left is I'm just trying to get that steel panel off just for recycling reasons. Um, that nice. Got to figure out how to get the. It's unbolted, but it's the pedal and the booster are still connected. I'm not sure if I just got to pull on it hard and it'll pull apart, or if there's something a trick to it. I have to look, I'll have to look up, look that up online. But uh, <clears throat> I'll get my big pry bar out, my my big pry bar, and I should be able to get the rest of it. Worst case scenario, you just heat up with the torch, and it'd probably come right off. That's probably what you're supposed to do: is heat it up, and then it'll come. Um, <laughs> come. Um. But yeah, otherwise I got everything off else off the firewall. Got the wiper mechanism and whatever the uh, controller that was on top and a few other little doodads. Um, so basically, uh, once I get done farting around, oh, I gotta remove the door hinges yet. I can do that now that the dash is out of the way. But uh, other than just uh, Getting the last few little stragglers and that, that steel panel, like I said. Uh, I'll be ready to tackle the last it, which is the stuff underneath the car. But, uh, that'll be another day, because it's starting to get late. Um, overall, I guess, I mean, I wish I was done now, but I'm happy that I at least got the dash out. Um, oh, I'll have to get all that crap in yet, because I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Maybe even tonight. But, uh, yeah, overall, I think it went well um yeah i think that's probably about it it's finally starting to get down there i'll have to peck through this unfortunately all the plastic's busted up um but yeah other than that i think that's about it one last final disassembly part all right see you next time Got it. I showed it for who's who. Anyways, next. Holy crap, got it. I kind of forgot to start up a video until I was just all ready to pry it out and I realized, oh crap, I never, never started a video. But anyways, holy crap. One, I didn't realize there was a third small strap holding the gas tank in. I was wondering why after, well the one was ripped out and the other one I finally got it cut. And I was like, God, I mean it was pinching up here pretty good. So I thought, well maybe that's all it's holding it in. Well, it was more than just that. And half the bolts were sheared off on this thing. God, this differential actually looks good yet, with the exception of this flange broke off. Son of a bean. Ironically, that bolt was actually still attached. <laughs> the worst mount of them all. But uh, that one was broke, that one was broke. That one was attached, and that was attached. That one there took a while to get a socket on it, but once I did... Ended up just snapping the head off because it was bent. And I didn't want to use a torch because I wasn't sure if the gas tank was punctured or not. Because sometimes I can smell gas so it may have been. There might be a microscopic cut or two and I just didn't want to take a chance. But I did have to use the torch to heat up the bolts that hold them in. Because I would have, I would have, I would have snapped my ratchet and my breaker bar. They were in there tight. But... Uh, yeah, and then just a lot of two pieces of pipe extended into each other to really give me some leverage. And <laughs> then at the last second there, I forgot. I was like, God, why is it not coming? There's like, oh yeah, rubber brake lines. Them things are tough. They they really hold. And that's when I found out there was, like I say, a third strap. And I just used a knife to cut the uh, filler neck and. 
that came out and there's there's definitely a few gallons there's probably premium too i'll have to dump that out in my uh gas tank and use that in the mower but uh yeah other than spending probably a good hour or so taking this apart and a few last things off of this that's pretty much done if i pull that shield out of the way i could pull the shifter out and that's pretty much it i mean i guess i'm more or less just going to call this good at this point as far as make it into a video the rest of it doesn't need to be shown Like I say, I just use the cherry picker to lift it up. And take care of it. Man, that wheel got tacoed pretty bad. That caliper is probably still fine. I'll have to check the mounts, make sure there's nothing broke. I see the bolts are bent, but bolts can be replaced. As long as it's anyways. Honestly, even if these wheels weren't damaged... They were powder coated at one time and then spray painted. They're all curb rashed. So even if they weren't wrecked at all, they'd still be worthless wheels. I actually, them, them TSW badges are probably, I think they're worth about 100 bucks, 75 to 100 bucks. Last time I checked. Anyways, oh, one last thing. I think what I'll do is I'm gonna cut that frame rail off. You know, cut the bottom of the pillar by the VIN number there. And of course, down the side of the rail, then come across to the rocker panel. Save that piece for someone who needs, you know, got right, you know, or left, I should say, left front corner damage. But uh, other than that though, like I say this is pretty much done. Just finished taking this shit apart and clean up this. Well, it looks like the car exploded. Let's just put it that way. That's actually not entirely inaccurate either. But uh, yeah, now to see what I get for scrap on this body. I might get a couple bucks. Anyways, I think that's about it. So I guess my uh, lesson learned on this is German cars suck. They really do. New cars suck. They really, really do. But oh well, you gotta, like I say, I'm used to old stuff. I, I've torn it apart probably over a hundred old cars in the last six seven years or at least it feels like it anyways probably not too far off and i've had them fight but never this bad so anyways catch you later <laughs> got it what a pain in the ass well the rocker it's so wide and you get all that bracing there and then this cut here I was wondering why I was taking so long it's not just sheet aluminum that's some thick ass shit especially when I got to there I was wondering why I was cutting so damn slow well now I know why I thought maybe it was just me but no that's uh, a <laughs> It's a big chunk of aluminum to be cutting through. But uh, anyways, I got it. Hello there. Uh, this is future Jared here. Uh, I guess I realized on the Audi, I never had, a, I guess, an outro sequence explanation or description, whatever. So yeah, uh, cleaned up the mess, got the parts inside, processed them, listing for sale and all that stuff a long time ago. Um, and, uh, scrapped the remains of the shell and so on and whatnot, and 
So, uh, yeah, uh, the car was a turd. It was a pain to work on, both because it was German and because it was uh, accordion-shaped. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's, uh, I guess, probably the way to wrap this video up. Um, it's obviously a little longer than usual. Uh, probably could have maybe cut down to parts, but not gonna. So, alright, see you later.